This is a Kenwood KX5530 auto reverse stereo cassette tape deck. It has Dolby B, C, and it has HX Pro. It also has something else that I've added, and that is a light for the cassette compartment. Now I've done that as a process, part of the process of refurbishing this unit because as I was working with the unit, I realized I couldn't see the tape moving uh, or advancing. Most of these units, most cassette units had a light of some sort behind the cassette. This has kind of a silver mirrored piece back here, which you can't do anything with, you can't see. So what I did was I added that so that when you put a tape in, you could actually see it advancing. Now, there are other things that I've done with this cassette deck. Nearly all of these arrive near needing a new belt. Sometimes they also need new pinch rollers. This one has replacement pinch rollers in it. And other things need to be done, usually like setting the azimuth, that's the tape head setting to make sure that it's correct. And as you know, by watching my videos, I use a reference tape, two reference tapes actually. One of them is a professional uh, azimuth calibration cassette. You use this with an oscilloscope. And just for a sanity check, I use a commercial tape called the Escape Club. What's great about this tape is it's uh, actually uh, recorded, I think, with Dolby C. And uh, it is, it's an excellent tape for me to use to verify that the azimuth is correct. There's something else that goes on with these particular decks, and it's annoying, quite frankly, and it has to do with the motors. The drive motors in these uh, either go bad or start to squeal. Now, there's a difference. Going bad means you can't ever get them to run at the right speed, um, or they run too slow, or they run too fast, no matter how you've adjusted it. Um, but if a motor starts to squeal or make uh, a high-pitched noise, that is an example of, of a bearing issue where it needs either oil or grease. Now, of course, this was made in the mid-1990s. It was uh, actually first uh, available in 1991, and it went through 1992. You could probably still buy them in 93 and 94. Uh, the deck itself is uh, a very good sounding deck, sort of just out of the box. Uh, it has uh, something on the deck which is not typical, this, this auto bias. The auto bias allows you to choose a tape, like the one I have now, hit the auto bias control, and what that does is it, and it happens to be going in the left direction right now, see the arrow? What that does is it records a tone onto the tape and then it plays that tone back and automatically sets the bias. You may remember on some units a bias fine adjustment. This does it automatically. So it's now verifying the bias is correct for that particular tape. And now the bias is set for that tape at least for this particular recording section when that's done. Now, and when you've completed that, you can then set that as a bias preset. So let's say you're always using uh, this kind of tape. I think it's just a Radio Shack. It's a SHD um, tape. This was um, put out actually by myself for Radio Shack, but it is a um, high bias tape. It's a 
CRO2 or chromium dioxide tape. Uh, as I said, this has um, is auto reverse, it plays in both directions. And so what we'll do is I'll do a bit of a recording for you, but there are also some neat things that, that you get with this deck. This has an auto fader. If you'll notice, it's now fading down. And if you hit it again, it'll fade up for you to whatever the set point was. So let's say the set point is, I don't know, five and a half for uh, the recording that you, you want. You, could, you can test that by putting it into record mode, pausing it, and then listening to whatever the uh, source is that you want to use. This is a source that I use every now and again just for fun uh, when I am testing. <laughs> So you can set your meter or set your uh, record volume the way you want it. I'm getting a, up to a plus two. So you can get your recording ready to go. And then what you can do is start that recording. Now notice I have it on pause right now. So I can start my uh, the, the, let me go. I can set, uh, or I can start my playback of a selection and I can fade it in. So we'll do that right now. I'll start the, uh, uh, fade in and the music. A little high. Let's go ahead. Okay, so that's the that's the test. Uh, one other thing that you can do with the deck, of course, is you can record with um, Dolby noise reduction, and you can choose every time you hit it, it's different. Uh, Dolby B, Dolby C, or no Dolby. So I'm going to record with Dolby C. I'm going to zero this. I'm going to start this back up at, uh, at the beginning of this selection. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start the recording. And we'll auto fade. So now what we're going to do is we'll let that, we'll stop that. So one of the features it does have is if you're still in play mode and you want to go back a selection, see it says one, finds the blank section and then starts playing. Dolby C. So that gives you an idea of how it uh, plays and records. Uh, you can also play and record in the other direction. So um, what I'll do is, and I think I might have shown that to begin with, but you'll notice there are two play directions. If I hit this play direction, it switches 
to the other side of the tape. I have the, some of the same tested materials on the other side of the tape as well. Um, so you can uh, change direction either way. One other thing that you can do is um, you can uh, you can certainly change your direction in terms of what it's it's going to play. So this is going to play one side or the other and then stop. It'll play one side, then it'll go to the second side and then stop or continuous play. Okay. Um, a couple of other things about the deck. Um, you do have a timer uh, here. This was for recording broadcast uh, where you would be able to set a separate timer that would turn the unit on when the unit was turned on. It would just start playing whatever direction it was left. So um, it's on play. If you did record, it would record. Um, so if I do play and I turn it on, it'll just start playing uh, in the direction that we had it. Um, and then the last thing is this is an electronic eject electronic it's electrical eject so when you hit this it actually will release uh, the cassette tape for you and that pretty much takes you through uh, the basics for this particular deck there are um, other feature there's another feature like the, the index scan if you want to look for other selections it will look for them and then start to play that selection for you. And then it'll continue to do that. It'll keep looking for blank, blank parts of the tape. It'll play a little bit and then it'll fast forward looking for another blank po portion. So it's looking for, for tracks. It's looking for space between tracks. That's a nice feature. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, it. Um, there may be other features uh, for this deck that uh, might be listed in the uh, the owner's manual. Um, I will print a reproduction owner's manual for this when I sell the deck for you. Uh, uh, sorry, one last thing, and I I almost forgotten. There is a record balance. Um, which you can use. The other decks that I have will either have a dual record level button, which gives you the ability to balance the input. It, this one doesn't have a dual, but it has a record balance um, potentiometer. Now, when I uh, did the calibration of the deck, I, I, I calibrated the balance, so it should be perfectly in the middle for most of the music you record. You may get something that you want to record that is more, uh, is louder maybe on, on the left channel or the right channel, and you want to balance it out, and that's what that's going to be for. Okay, that's it uh, for a tour of the deck. Any questions you have, please leave them in the comments. Uh, again, thanks for watching. And as a bonus, I had a question from somebody about being able to see into the deck. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, here, the unit is on. There's no tape in it. We'll take a look inside. And let me zoom in on that. Um, there's the, and now obviously you can see with the light, uh, you can see the, the pinch rollers. I, um, I admit this particular set of pinch rollers probably needs to be cleaned. Uh, since it's been played a few times, so I'll make sure I've cleaned those. Uh, sorry, the pointer keeps messing with the focus. Um, yeah, but you can see the head is looks pretty good. Uh, the pinch rollers look pretty good. This one could use uh, a little more cleaning, so I'll do that before I release the deck. But look at how well lit that is. You can you can really see the the tape compartment really nicely and uh, when it's in let me give you a detailed view of that there's a nice detailed view that you can uh, you can see 
You can definitely see the tape moving. There you go too. You can see it moving there as well. So you see why I added the light to the compartment because without the light, that's what it looked like even when it was running. So that was a bonus just so you could actually see what it looked like and I hope this works for you. Again, let me know what else I can tell you in the uh, in the comments. Oh, one last thing, I will do a recording um, of this deck, add it to this video at the end. So you're going to have the reference recording of a selection and then you're going to have this deck playing it back um, from that selection. So I hope that gives you enough to go on in terms of knowing not only that this deck works, but how well it works. Thanks again. <laughs>